All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a explanation for the Cube Director's Cut Speedrun category. Uh, there is also another version of Cube, uh, just titled Cube, that I have not run due to not having the optimal version to run it. But Director's Cut is nice, you can download it uh, off Steam and it comes with a version that works just fine for everything you need. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to go ahead and listen to her talk a little bit. Start the timer after the next sentence. At the end of complication, I mean. So first off, you want to try to jump over this little ledge as it's coming down, and you want to try to get as much momentum over top of this block as possible, and that can save a few frames. So I usually stand right around here, and whenever the block gets around here-ish, I start running forward, and I go for the jump over the block. Another thing, uh, God, she needs to shush. Alright, I'll talk more later. We'll just go ahead and go. I'll talk about movement when she's done. I have some difficult facts for you. You're a long way from Earth. A very long way. But every single person on the planet is depending on you. That thing you're inside right now, whatever it is, is gonna hit Earth in the next few hours. And if it does, that's the end of everything. You need to decipher and dismantle it from the inside before that happens. I just hope you haven't forgotten how. Alright, in this gap, I like to try to get speed as it's opening, and if now, you do that, you can hit the back wall a few frames earlier. The reason why it's me talking to you and not mission control. Or rather, pass the entrance. I always run to the back wall to make sure that I don't accidentally stop this from closing. If you stand too close, then the door doesn't close behind you. I'm an astronaut on board the International Space Station. I'm gonna relay everything they tell me, but the bad news is, every time I orbit around the far side of the Earth, I'll move out of radio range. When that happens, you're gonna be on your own for a while. Just stay calm, and keep your head straight until I get back into range. Okay, this is it. I'm orbiting out of range now. All right, I'll be back there's gonna soon. be a jump, uh, hole that you jump you. through here. This block's gonna lower. I jump through as soon as this top part is level with this. That's whenever I start running forward. And that allows you to get through the window optimally. So the thing I wanted to say about like movement in this game, the fastest way to move is to repeatedly jump, and you want to bind uh, jump to the scroll wheel in order to always hit your jumps. This doesn't save that much time, but it does save about a second on longer stretches of movement. And overall, throughout the run, the more you can do it, the more time you're saving. So just try to be moving like this as much as possible. So as we come through here, we're already going to be looking here. And we're going to press right. And what right does is it pushes the block down. So we want to try to hit that block twice, right at the beginning. And then we're going to run up here. And we're going to try to get this pushed up before we reach it so that we can jump and push up as we're jumping onto it and then we push up one more time, and we end up here. At that point, we jump off. This should already be down from us pushing it back there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to push this out three times, and our goal is to jump to where we land. Oh, sorry, give me a second. Jump to where we land up here. This is a little trickier than you might think because the ceiling is right above you, so if you jump too early, you bounce like that, and if you wait too late, you just run off without bouncing. So timing that jump's important. So just to show you what that looks like all together, uh, let me go ahead and raise this up. So 
We're coming through here. We're going to push that. We're going to push it again. Oh, I had it and I didn't know. And then we're going to push up twice. And then we want to push this one up as we're jumping. Now, the second thing I want to mention is uh, this actually kind of got me when I was first trying to speedrun this game. If you just spam the click button, you'll sometimes not uh, have it come out like frame perfectly. Like you see the little delay there was there. So what you want to do is you want to hold down the click button and it'll always do a frame perfect click. And if you hold down the other one, it will do a frame perfect switch. But you'll notice that it actually takes uh, less time to go multiple times in or multiple times out than it does to switch from going out to in. Like here, I'll show you. So if I, uh, I'm gonna hold my left click and then immediately hold my right click. See that delay? Now if I just hold uh, right click twice, it'll go in quicker and there won't be that delay. So that's really important. That allows you to make sure you're always clicking things as fast as possible and it removes some of the technical execution of trying to click and always timing your click to where you get frame perfectly. It removes that issue. So like I said, we push this out three times, we jump through, and we want to jump to where we don't hit our head, and we want to push this block up as we're doing it. If you do it smoothly, it should uh, you should be able to just hold down left click and just make it to this block as uh, the fourth press is coming out. So something like this. See what I mean? And then this opens up. It's pretty easy here. You just bounce up, you jump, you bounce up, you jump, you bounce up, and you want to switch this one down mid-air. But this is pretty simple. Then we run over here, we drop that, we bounce backwards, we run over here, we drop that, and then as we're running this way, we want to push this out three times. You can try to do it while like doing jumps, uh, and that actually will save a little bit of time if you're bunny hop into it, but sometimes you might like miss a shot and that might be bad. So once you have it out three times, you jump, you land on it, and as you're landing, you want to push right trigger. You see how that pulls me in? That actually gives you a little tiny speed boost, saves a couple frames. Now as you're coming through here, top left, you want to click this. If you miss it, that's okay. You want to click this, come over here. If you missed it at this point, you can click it and you can land on here without losing any time. But usually it's easier to have this out first. So all together that looks something like this. It's going to look weird since I'm running from further back. So push, push, and I messed up the jump, but... As you see, I didn't do like jumping up the stairs like you would need to if you push this out first. Whenever you push this up, you'll notice that it starts with the lowest end and raises up to the highest end. So you can run off, you land on here, and then you run off, you land on here. Which makes it to where you don't have to do any extra jumps. It's convenient. Alright, so in here, this is the block you see first, so you click on this one first, and then you hold down the right trigger and you immediately look at your feet and this pushes you up. So it should look something like this at full speed. And boom, and then we immediately jump up here. And now this is the first like legitimate trick of the game. So this box right here, not all yellow boxes like this do it, but this specific one does it. If you stand in the middle here and you push up and you jump at just the right time, you get enough height to clear over this. And I use an audio cue for it, so I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like if you do it right. And I want you to listen to the sound. So, so you hear how it goes, the upper note that you hear, you want to time your jump to where you're jumping right as that upper note's happening, and that'll launch you up. So here, I'll show it one more time. It is, so that time I think I jumped a little too early. That time I jumped a little too late, I think. And that time, if you hold over to the right too early, you can bonk your head. So those are three things that can go wrong. And as you see, I am messing it up. This can be a little finicky, but once you get the feel of it, it's not so hard. It can be kind of weird to do out of flow, so it might not help if I actually start from further back. I do it first try, and now I'm stuck on it. A lot of time I jumped way too early, so. 
Now I'm jumping too late. There we go. Yeah, I have no idea why that was giving me so much trouble. So, as you see, the timing is everything with that. Um, luckily, this is really early in the run, so if you mess it up, it doesn't uh, set you back too far. This is usually like less than two minutes into the run, if I remember correctly. And uh, another good thing is it's pretty easy to reset, so if you're not super interested in resetting a ton because you're just starting out and you just want to get some runs under your belt, it's pretty easy to reset. So as soon as we go up here, we're gonna push this down, we're gonna click that, and we're gonna click that. Now the ideal optimal way to do this is to be jumping the whole time, but it's harder to hit the shots while jumping. So if you just wanna like do a regular run, it doesn't actually save that much time because it's not that long of a distance that you're bunny hopping. So for this particular one, if you miss either of those shots, you lose more time, so I usually just run up for safety. But if you wanna try to be absolutely optimal, that's what you do. So you push this down, you bunny hop down here, and then you push this. And the room's gonna start contracting. Um, but what you wanna do here, I'm probably actually gonna reset a couple times, is in order to make this gap, the normal press, you don't get enough distance. If you just like run off of this, you don't get enough distance until it's like close like this. And this is how the developers originally wanted you to do it. They want you to go up here, and they want you to push this out, and then push this, and go here but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get onto this block early and we're gonna get up here before the rooms even closed so we can jump across without having to do all that so let me go ahead and show what that looks like oh also real quick before that I want to talk about menuing so whenever you hit escape uh, it'll always be over resume unless you move your mouse over something so the fastest way to get to the menu is to press down twice enter right enter so you want to like get that move, move uh, that um, motion down, because at one point in the run, being able to quickly menu is going to be important. But we'll talk about that again at that point. So now I'm on this. So I hit up and then enter in order to continue game, and it'll bring me back to where we were last. So it brought me back here. And I actually did that backwards. Alright, so I want to jump off the very top left corner of this box. If you don't jump off the top left corner, then you can't make the distance. What is that happening? So there, as you saw, I was able to make the distance. So on this cube, if you, as, I, as you saw, whenever I just ran off of it, I didn't make the distance. But right here, you get the same amount of launch in the air as if you jumped back here, but you're starting the jump from a different spot. So if you jump right on the corner of the blue box, you get enough distance to land right on the corner of the yellow box. I'm gonna go ahead and show that again. It's awkward to start from that. I'm not used to starting from that. Sector 1 is a sector that I end up resetting on quite a lot. I usually try not to uh, continue a run unless I have at least a sub 3 minute Sector 1. So we're going to push that down and we're going to jump off the corner of it, like I said. And that's going to give us just enough distance. That jump can be a little tricky. Now once we're up here, I'm actually not going to worry about doing this super fast, I just want to show you what the motion is. What you're gonna do is you're gonna aim roughly at the top corner here, and you're gonna hold right click, and then immediately hold left click. And as you do, whenever you do that, what's gonna happen is this whole thing's gonna uh, entract in, and then as you hold left click, it's going to click the top block and it's gonna push out. And you notice how I said earlier that the small block comes out first, the medium block comes out second, and the long block comes out third? What's going to happen is you're going to be falling and you're actually going to be able to jump off of this middle block and land on the top block. So it's going to start off like this and you're going to be up here. You push it in and you start falling. And as you're falling, you click this and it starts this pushing out. 
and you land on this middle block and you jump with your scroll wheel and you land on the top block before the top block can push you off. So I'm actually going to show you what that looks like now. So we're going to push in, immediately push out, and then jump. And you land right up here like that. Now, as the room is closing, it's already closed at this point, but as it's closing, you want to wait until roughly this block right here is in place. And then you want to jump from this corner onto this corner and immediately hightail it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all in succession. That's also why I like to click uh, the back block from further away. See, whenever I have the uh, rhythm of it, it's easier to do that. And if you miss this the first time, you can just click it while you're up here. It just forces you to hesitate for a little half second. All right, so corner of the blue block. Oh. And the fun thing is, if you miss it like that, you actually have a little bit of time because the room's still closing and it takes a while for the room to close. So I actually didn't lose any time. So right about now you want to jump. And I like to push this block out, so in case I jump early like that, sometimes you land on the red block. As you saw there, I actually uh, held too far to the right, so that didn't work. But anyway, you get the idea. And then you jump over here, and we want to bunny hop over here, split as soon as the cutscene starts, at least I do, and we start with sector two. Alright, so for sector two, I want to talk about these blocks right here. So if I just run up here and then land on the block and then try to jump forward, you'll notice my body hits this. So if I just do something like this, you'll notice I kind of lose momentum, I lose speed. And that's not good because we're speed running, we want to gain speed. But I found that if you jump about where this line is, you can land on the very edge of the block. And if you immediately jump as soon as you hit the edge of the block, you can actually get up here without losing any speed. This is relatively minor, but I like to do it anyway. So as you see there, lost no speed. So we come in here and we want to do the same thing again, jump from about right here. And there I actually got hung up a little bit, probably because I jumped a little later than I wanted to. Now this chamber has uh, an easy way to do it and then there's a quick way to do it. We're going to talk about both, but the quick way is obviously better. Um, so we push this three times, putting this on here, and then we jump up here. And the easy way is to push it one, two, three times, and then you have enough height just to jump up here. If you have it at the uh, middle height, you do not get enough height to jump up here. But there is another element to it. If you see, whenever I push this up, the cube kind of bounces a little bit. And whenever you push it up to the second level, it bounces just enough that you can get a little boost and get up there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we push once, twice, and we jump off at the top, and we can actually land at, up here because we jumped when this was up in the air. But if we waited, we don't get enough height. So this isn't too hard. You just got to kind of get a feel of the timing, and you get up here. Now as I'm going down this hall, I'm trying to strafe jump, and I'm trying to push this block out. Once it's out, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to push this one in. And then there's two strats you can do here. Uh, I'm going to teach you the faster strat first. So what you want to do for the faster strat, which is a little riskier if you miss it, is you want to push this. That'll push you onto the blue block, and both you and the green block will be pushed up. The next thing that's going to happen is as you're going up, you're going to push this as the green block is passing it, which is going to push you and the green block over to the right. And then you're still on the green block, so you're going to jump off of the green block and land up here. So I'll go ahead and show you kind of what it looks like when you push it. So you do that. Oh, sorry, my bad. So it pushes you, and it gives you just close enough to where you can jump and land up there. So let's see what that looks like all the way through. So you're coming down the hall, you're pushing this, and then you do like that. So that's the faster way. Um, 
The other way you can do it is a little easier to reset because if you push it, then it lands on top of the red block rather than here if you mess it up. So let me show you what I mean. So if I didn't jump at the right time and I mess up and I land like maybe over here or I just didn't land in the right spot at all, then that sucks because now the fastest way to reset is actually to hit the reset button. The other way to do it is easier to reset because instead of trying to get pushed by the block, you're actually going to try to land the green block on top of here. So something like this. So we land up here, we push it over once, and then you have enough distance to make that jump. So of the two, you want to get good at the quick version because it saves just a little bit of time. But if that's too hard, go ahead and practice the uh, easy one. See, there I missed it, and now I have a long reset. So if you want to just like get the more consistent thing, because you're not confident with the uh, with jumping off of the moving block, completely understandable. Now this one, there's a couple different ways you can do this jump, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually launch this cube up, and we're going to jump off of the cube as it's getting launched up, and get boosted up there. So for this, we push this one down first, and then we go one, two, three, and I actually messed up the timing. But as it's going onto the blue button, you want to jump and you want to hit it. So let me actually reset there and show you what it's supposed to look like. This one is uh, sometimes a little finicky to get right. So there, that's what it should look like. Things that can go wrong, uh, if you don't jump at the right time, you don't actually get the boost or you might get the boost and you might hit your head on the ceiling here. So like one thing you might see is something like this. So if that happens to you, that's because you uh, didn't land on the cube at the right time. Uh, another one that might happen is something like that, where you get pushed up over the edge and that's happening because the cube is pushing you up and you didn't jump off of it. So you just end up walking up there. But if you do it right, it should look something like this. Also, um, if you slide off of it before the right timing, it can you can just run off the front like that. So yeah, different things that can go wrong. But if you do it right, it looks like that. And then we move on to this section. Now this section is all about timing. You'll notice that we do not want to actually press the play button immediately, because if we press the play button immediately, we don't have enough time to do the next part. So I'll show you what I mean. So you can press the play button as soon as you see this, but that doesn't really help you because by the time you get here to push this block up, the ball is already in the trench. So what you want to do is, well, what's happening? Oh, there we go. Uh, so as you're coming through here, you want to pause for a second and then click this and jump and start pushing this up twice. That allows it to roll down here, but oh no, it hits the thing. So what we want to do is as it's rolling there, we push this, we push this. That gives us the floor. Then we want to push this, and we want to push this, and that makes it go over here into this trench. And as it's going into this trench, we want to time pressing this block so the ball rolls off of this one first, then the middle one, then the long one. There's that concept again. The, the small one comes out first. So I'll show you what that looks like. You'll notice the bottom one comes up first, and that is important. So there, I actually uh, mistimed it, and it got caught on that, which is bad, because then you have to wait for the ball to roll again, which is obviously a waste of time. Well, that was awkward. That's weird. I'm actually messing up the timing. Trying to explain it, I guess I end up uh, making mechanical errors that I wouldn't make if I was actually like doing the speed run. Okay, that's bizarre. I've never actually seen that happen. <laughs> okay, that's new. At least to me. Ignore this part. like that. 
and then you want to push this down. You want to do that ideally before that starts. So let me show, see if I can actually just do it at actual speed and if that helps. So we go boom, boom. And it goes in just like that. And then we want to run through here. I like to kind of press left slightly because you can get caught on those doors uh, pretty easily. They kind of drag you to the right. But if you hold left, it kind of counteracts that. You just like tap it, you don't hold it. And then we move into sector three. Uh, now, there's a couple things you can do in this stage. There's a really inconsistent but slightly faster strat. And then there's the safe strat that I tried my best to not resort to but I ended up resorting to it anyway, and the previous world record does as well, so I don't feel so bad. So this first part is not necessary, but it does help a little bit. As you're going through here, you'll notice as you enter this crack, there's a second where you can see this red block. And what you wanna to try to do is you wanna to try to click it whenever you have the opportunity, because we're gonna to need to push this out, and if you can click it now, it saves the time of a block being pushed in or out, which is, like a pretty reasonable number of frames. So it saves a couple frames, it allows you to go faster. If you miss it, eh, don't worry about it. It's only a small window that you can hit it. So you wanna do something like that. I think I barely missed it. There we go, so that time I clicked it. And then you wanna run over here and you wanna push this out a couple times, twist this, push this out, jump up here. And then depending on what strategy you want to use depends on what happens next. So let's say that I just want to do the safe strat. If I want to do the safe strat, we're going to push this twice, twist this, push this down, and we're going to jump over here and we're going to land on this, and we're going to twist back. This is basically the intended solution to the puzzle. And it's fine, it's not too slow. So you'll see my speed run attempt does it that way. You'll see most of my previous attempts, I try to do this second faster route that doesn't save that much time and is the hardest jump in the game. Uh, if you didn't get the snipe through the window, it looks pretty much the same. You just push it three times, um, but that slightly delays how quickly you can twist the room. All right, so the hard strat is to try to uh, get a perfectly on the edge, jump off this cube and land perfectly on the edge of this cube. So whenever we were in that first uh, sector, I mentioned that you have to jump off the corner to make enough space to hit the yellow thing that was over here. But this is that concept taken to a higher extreme. So if you hit anywhere on the button other than the very edge of it, you don't get enough distance to get up here. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So let me see if I can actually hit this first try. Probably not. So there I actually uh, jumped a little bit too late. Here, I'll just jump on the button kind of normal to show you what happens. You come up short. So I have a little setup that sometimes works and that's what you want to see happen. I'm actually really surprised I got that. <laughs> that easily. So my setup that I use only works in the high graphics, um, different screen resolutions. You'll have to find your own like setup. But what I do is I basically, this line that divides them, I wait until it is just disappearing off the bottom of my screen at a full run. And then I jump and I try to hit the very edge of this. If you miss, you just kind of walk forward and then you have to reset, which wastes time. And if you get too short, then you might think you're barely going to make it, but you're not making it, and that feels bad. Let me see if I can get it one more time. So there, that would have been a huge waste of time. Waste of time. And as you see, if you don't hit this perfectly, it just wastes so much time. That was too short. I jumped too early. I imagine someone... Uh, could potentially get this really consistent. I practiced it quite a lot to try to get it consistent. It's real hard. And it doesn't save that much time. Now, let's say that you're good at doing that. The actual optimal way to do this whole chamber is pretty tricky. It is possible to do, but I'll show you basically what you wanna do. The optimal way to do this chamber 
is to get the snipe through the window and then do this part. By the way, you can start twisting that short a uh, little bit before you actually get to this part because the ground is still walkable while it's twisting for a few seconds. And then as soon as you're in this range, you want to, uh, this would be pushed out, you want to push that in, press this twice as you're going through this doorway, and then do this and get the bounce and barely hit the edge. As you see, that time I was I hit about right there, which was too far back. You have to hit there. So this is not good. This is good. Um, if you did not hit the snipe through the window, you can still do it cleanly without losing any time going through here. But what you're going to do is you're going to come around, you're going to push that in, push this out twice as you're going through the room. You can't push it out a third time without pausing to wait a second, otherwise you won't be able to do the setup. So I push it out twice, I look down, I do the jump, land on the edge, and then while I'm in the air, I'll push it out and try to land on it. So let me show you kind of what that looks like if uh, you don't have the good setup. So one, two, get ready for setup. Oh, <laughs> forgot to do that part. I was wondering why I had so much time. So push down, one, two, there, I actually messed it up because I was not clean on it, so do that again. So down, one, two. And ideally, I would have hit it there. Let me go ahead and just do it again. Damn it. This is really precise, so I would love to see someone who can get this jump consistent. And then as you're in the air, you push it out. As you see that time, I didn't even hit it well enough. So it's really difficult to make the edge jump. My recommendation, uh, unless you really want to try to sit, shave frames off this game, is to just do it the way Smokey uh, does it, and just push it out a couple times, push this in, twist the room. That was supposed to get pushed in. Twist this, jump up here, do this. It isn't that much slower. But if you want to be super optimal, that's what you do. All right, now this room's trick is really fun and pretty consistent to get. So uh, you just kind of have to get the knack of it. So what you want to do is as you're coming through the room, you want to push this uh, launch plate in. And our goal is to land up here. But we're not going to land directly here. We're going to land like in this corner. And then what you want to do next is you want to twist the room. And you want to go in here. And you want to land on, you want to stand on here. Now, normally the intended solution involves twisting this block over here, bouncing from here to over there, and then twisting the room and doing the thing under here, and then you bounce up here. It's a big mess. It's annoying. So we're not going to do any of that. Screw all that. What we're going to do is we're going to twist the room, and while the room is twisting, this thing is moving. You see that? So it's there. There it is. So as it's moving, it's still activated, and you can still launch off of it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to jump backwards at an angle, hit this while it's twisting, and get launched into this corner. And it looks, oh, I forgot to click. And it looks like this. Oh, that time I messed it up. It looks just like that. Now, the key to doing this is as you are jumping backwards, you want to hold back until just before you hit the spring, and then when you hit the spring, you want to start holding forward and slightly to the right. At least that's what I do. So, forgot to actually push this in. So hold forward as soon as you, uh, right before you hear the spring, and you make just enough distance. If you don't hold forward, I'll show you what happens if you don't hold forward at the right time. You lose speed and you don't make it. So it's all about timing the forward press and just kind of jumping off of this the right way. And of course, I forgot to do that again. Um, you don't want to click and jump at the same time. You want to run backward for a frame or so before you start jumping. So see, if I just do an immediate jump like that, then it doesn't work. 
but if I run backwards for a few seconds or for a few frames and then jump, then I get enough distance to hit the plate. And then this is just a bunny hopping hole, so it's optimal to just bunny hop down. And then when it starts twisting to the left, Hello? you just kind of follow the wall. Can you hear me? And you can get through that door pretty cleanly without bonking into any geometry. The next hallway is going to be basically the same thing after we listen to this uh, lady talk for a little bit. And you're going to curve off to the right instead. I'm so at the it's peak pretty of my orbit again. So fingers crossed this is getting to you. I've been speaking with Michigan There's a lot of elevators in this game. They're worried about you. Because your radio's out, we don't know if you've lost your memory or not. If you have, it could, it could be bad for the mission. One of the methods they use to bring back memories for amnesiac patients is to talk to them about important events in their lives. So, before you left, you wrote yourself a letter, just in case. It's a letter to you about you. Mission just Control gave you a transcript. Ideally, you want to try to not bonk into the wall at all. I stopped jumping for a second, so I make sure that I don't jump up short, because if you just like keep the bunny hop momentum you had before, you okay. do something like well, landing in front of this, and that's bad. No so I wait just a second, and then I jump up here. And then for this little gap here, if you jump at just the right time, you can barely hit the corner here oh, and jump over without losing any of the speed. But if you don't do it, you do this again. And as we know, doing this is slow. We don't want to do that. So you want to just barely hit the front of the cube. There, I didn't hit far enough. There, I got hung up a little bit. This is really minor, but practicing stuff like this does help you save a little bit of time. There you go. No loss of time. No bonk. All right, now this next room is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can tackle it, but I'm only going to show you the way I tackle it because I feel like it's uh, pretty consistent, and I like the way I do it. So I come in here. And I start holding down my right click button to push this in. I look up here, I click that, and I click that, and then I'm pushing this. So what's gonna happen is whenever I push this up, it's gonna push the box out like that. But I'm gonna be standing on the box, and as the green box gets pushed out, I'm gonna be basically jumping onto this box. Or I'm not even gonna be jumping, I'm just gonna be walking onto this box. So I'll show you what it actually looks like. So I push that in, we twist this, we push that in, we stand on the box, we push one, two, three, and we hold forward. And by holding forward, you don't get launched with the box for some reason, and you can just kind of jump and land up here. Once you're up here, you press this and you twist over, and you're in the right spot. But there's this little weird gap here, and this moving platform also has some funkiness to it, where if you haven't settled into your landing, sometimes it'll just push you off. So let me see if I can actually show you what I mean. So if I twist this too early, no, we're good. I don't know. It's kind of hard to show if uh, it's not going to work, so. Yeah, there we go. It slid me off that time. So you want to make sure that your character model's kind of like settled into the animation. So all together, we push that, we push that, we push that. We get over here, we start pushing this. We hold into the wall, and we just jump up on this, wait for settle, twist the room, bada bing, bada boom, we're moving on. A little bit more bunny hopping. In this room, you can see this first, so I usually try to press that. You spin over here and you twist the button. Pressing this first does not matter even remotely. If you miss this, doesn't matter. If you don't even want to try to go for this, doesn't matter. What matters is hitting this button ASAP. So if you want to do it as fast as possible, you want to be hitting this button just as you're barely able to see it. Like that. And because while the ball is falling, you have enough time to press this twice and get it into position. So let me actually kind of reset that situation. So we're coming around, we press this, press this twice, and you want to make sure that the ball is on the wall before you press it again, and it'll go in fine. But I want to show you what happens if you don't. So let's say I press this, I press this, and I press this, and then I push it like that. Wait, is that going to go in? Yeah, it goes in slower. Ah, damn it. I actually did not want that to happen. So, we come around the corner. We hit this. Oh, wait. Sorry. The only way to get this wrong is uh, if you don't, is if you press this first. So, I press this. 
So if you push it like that, it actually goes too far and it gets stuck like here. So you want to make sure the ball is settled before you push it. Uh, if it's not touching the back wall, it can get stuck like this and then you, you're just losing time for no reason. But if you wait for it to be fine, you push it, it'll go in the hole just fine. Now we jump over this wall and we want to start by hitting this down before we push this. The reason why, remember how I said that it takes longer to switch back and forth like this than it does to just press something twice like this? Well, we're going to be pushing this twice, so you don't want to push this once, push this down, and then push this again, because then you're getting a delay between each of the switches. You want to push this down and then press this twice, it goes onto the ball, and then we use the plate to jump over this wall. As we jump over the wall, while we're in the air up there, we want, to click, we want to click that as soon as possible. And then as soon as it's settled, we want to click up. So we're twisting the room down and then up. And as it's going up, we want to push this as quickly as possible so the ball goes in the hole as soon as we can. The next room is pretty easy. I'm going to hold the left click. I'm going to click this, then this. And then I'm going to switch to holding right click, and I'm going to click this and push it in. And it's going to look like this. And the ball will always go in just fine. That's, that's the advantage of basically buffering your clicks. Now, after that goes in, I like to jump up on this little cube, uh, usually around the second or third rung. And as the wall is coming over, I jump over the wall. As I'm jumping over the wall, I click this and I push this up while it's twisting. It's important this gets up before the ball gets to this corner because if it doesn't, if you let the ball land here, then you can't push it up into the right block. You see, it doesn't go. So what the previous record did uh, is just about as fast, it doesn't actually what I'm doing doesn't actually save that much time, but it's a little bit quicker. But what the previous record does is it pushes this block first, and then it twists this so that the block always lands where it needs to. And that's a safer strat, because now if I twist the room, it'll always land where it needs to be, which is on top of this part. And then you twist it up, and it goes in. But if you can actually twist this first, and push this, then you can immediately twist back a little bit faster, and it saves a couple frames. So the optimal way to do this is a little bit riskier. If you mess it up, it takes longer to reset. But what this looks like all together, I jump over the wall, I click this, and then I press this while it's twisting, and then I twist it back, and we press this up, we stay with it, and then we jump over this wall, this wall comes down, and we want to jump over this middle part. And we're about to get another split, bop, as soon as the cutscene starts. All right, the next sector is going to have some of this. So I usually push this, and then as soon as I can, I press this button. It's top for test! What happens is the ball gets launched over this little red thing and it gains the property of blue from this transparent box and it goes into the blue goal. Next what we want to do is red. So as soon as you see the blue ball go in there, you want to be pressing this button again and you want to have the blue button pressed down. And you want to push it over like this, it lands on the thing, you press this, and as soon as it goes in there, you want to press it to get it going again. And then you do that. And as soon as the ball makes contact with the surface, it's counted as a scored goal. You don't have to like wait around. So you want to try to do that as quick as possible. So let me show you kind of what the speed you want to be going for is. I think I actually was a little bit slow on that. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm a moron. I'm not used to being that close. Uh, it starts you closer for this because of all that. So you start back here, you press this down, and you click this as soon as you can. That's going to bounce over. It's going to roll all the way to blue. As soon as it hits the thing, I'm going to press this. I use an audio cue to tell. Oh, I actually missed the click, but that's fine. 
<laughs> if you hit it too late, then it gets multiple colors and it's not good. So let me actually try that one more time. So we want to do something like this. It bounces over, does its thing. So as you see, I can click the play button pretty quickly. For this one, you just want to make sure you click the ball when it's on the smallest block. And then we jump over here, and you want to be waiting at the door so you don't lose any time. Bunny hop down this hall. You don't want to bunny hop upstairs, though. So as you're coming up this ramp, there's another button on the ceiling up here that's going to launch us over to this side. So what you want to do is you want to come over here, and you want to hug this wall. And I like to turn my camera 90 degrees and just hold uh, D, so I'm strafing directly right. I press this down, and whenever I feel spatially that I'm around right here, where I'm like right on the corner, as I'm looking up at it, I just jump up and it launches me over. So that's the way to do that quickly. Let me show you kind of what that looks like at full speed. So we're coming up here, we press this down, we hang the right wall, we start strafing, press it down, press forward, and we get launched over. Easy peasy. Now the button's going to be over here. We press the button as soon as possible. Then we want to twist the room, and we want to put the green button in. Now there's actually a way to do that slightly faster than I just did. Um, and I didn't even notice until recently. So the slightly faster way to do it is to actually... Let me reset this. As you're coming in the room, you want to actually press this, then push this down, and then twist the room. That's the optimal way to do it. And I have not been doing the optimal way, so that's actually a time save for the, uh, for the current run. So you press, push this down, and then you twist the room, and then it pushes it over here, and it turns blue. Once it turns blue, you're going to use this to push it and make sure it goes into the blue section. So let me show you what that looks like all the way through. So we're coming down the hallway, we push, we click, we twist. We push again. And sometimes if you don't push quick enough, it actually gathers some of the yellow and turns green, and you don't want that. So let's do that again. This whole section is really easy to lose time on and very difficult to gain time on. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay. Also, it's kind of weird to not do it from further back. So let me go ahead and do it from further back. So we go boom, boom, boom. Press over, and then push. And this will go all the way over into the blue one. Sometimes, if you do it wrong, it'll actually go all the way to yellow. So as soon as that hits, you can be pressing the play button again. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to be turning the ball yellow and getting it over there. So we press play. We tip twist this room. And we, oh, I actually did that wrong, give me a sec. You know, that actually might be a strat, uh, turning it yellow with the twist of the room. That'd be weird, really hard to time though. So you press this, you twist this in, and we twist the room. It'll bounce it up here, it'll roll off this, and then we twist the room to make it go over into the right. You wanna be twisting the room right as the ball is on the edge. If you do it too early, then the ball can get stuck, and if you do it too late, then the ball just rolls through the gap and you kind of lose time. And then for the last one, as the yellow ball is going in, we actually want to twist this room up to get it prepared for the next section. We want the ball to be snug in this corner as the thing is twisting this way. So ball's falling, we want it to be in this corner, hits the red, and then we want to hit this at the best timing we can, otherwise we lose a couple frames, and then it goes in there. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like all together. It's bizarre that it sends me this far back. Ah! <laughs> Sometimes you just miss the fucking plate as you're trying to click it. Alright, so boom. It's just about to go in. And then we twist this up. 
Also, if you hit the button right as it's hitting the goal, sometimes you can actually get some weird momentum because it's not a new ball, it's the same ball just being teleported. And as you see, as it falls, it gains a little acceleration. So if you hit this button just as it's falling at the end, you can actually launch the ball slightly. Uh, sometimes it'll launch it further back that way, in which case you have to hit the reset button, which sucks. But sometimes you can get a little bit of speed boost and actually twist these parts quicker to gain a couple frames. I haven't really optimized that to the fullest that it could be optimized because it seems a little difficult to get consistent. I'm back in range. But it is something that Fingers is a potential crossed. optimization for this game. Look, so as you're coming up here, you press those two, and then I just like to look up memory. and press that in as I'm going under it. And then you bounce, 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 and we're coming over here. This room, it actually... Oh, no, not this part. Ignore me. So, I want you to know... On the next room, the floor starts rising from the back of the room, and it's like at an angle. So in the next room, we're actually going to try to stand as far back, or like a couple blocks back, because it'll be higher ground than standing up here next to the wall, and it'll allow us to jump over the wall sooner in the elevator. It only saves a few frames, but you want to save those frames. By what you want to save frames. You can usually make a jump from about one and a half blocks, so whenever this is one and a half blocks high, I can jump up here. That's how you can time to make sure you're always jumping. Uh, at the earliest time possible. It's not super important for this elevator, but it is for later elevators. I start jumping when this is slightly below the middle, and that time I jumped too early, I got caught on it. So as you see in this room, the back starts rising up first, and you can see a slight angle. So the thing I said about being able to jump half a block, you can actually jump faster from the back than from the front. So we want to start off by twisting that, make it turn blue, and then we're going to push it into the red blocks, makes it uh, purple, and score like that. And then uh, once it hits that, we hit this again, and we're going to twist the room the other way. So we started off twisting it counterclockwise, and we twist it clockwise. And then we twist it to where it gets over here on blue, and we twist it again. So the green one, it gets twisted three times. It goes vroom, vroom, vroom. And then the last one, the yellow one, we're going to press this, we're going to twist it clockwise so the weight of the ball goes over in yellow. It's going to go down here and we're going to push it off of this into red. I like to press it whenever the ball gets right around here. You can try to press it further back. Um, and the earlier you press it, the better, unless you press it too early, in which case it actually ends up missing the red block entirely, and then you have to reset the ball. So just be careful of that. I've had that happen once or twice. Sometimes it's a little better to be safe than sorry on that. just a bunch of bunny hopping. So the next uh, section we're going to go through some cutscene and then we're going to go into a darker area and the darker area is just about kind of playing it long enough to where you know where you're at and what the visual markers are to look for. It's not too hard once you get used to it. She's lying to you. She's a liar. You know where they say you are. Now if you're holding forward this whole time, sometimes uh, whenever that animation happens it can glitch you out, so I actually don't start pressing forward until I see that animation play out. So we want to start bunny hopping down here, just in a straight line. You might want to try to click this box before you get to it, and then jump, press, jump, press, jump, up, and as you're running here you want to click on this so you ride it up like we did previously. And then you jump over the wall that's normally here. And then as you're coming on this, it is possible to do this next section without skipping a beat and just do it in one solid run. So the way you want to do that is you want to be looking over to the right and you want to be holding down right click at this point. You're going to click yellow and then you're going to click this. You're going to click blue and then you're going to switch your click to the right click and you're going to push this down. So. You want to do that as quick as possible, and then once you've done that, 
it is possible to actually make the jump from this plate over to the yellow part without having to use this red section at all. And the way we're going to do that is the same way that we did in the first sector and also with the hard jump that I talked about in the third sector. And that is hitting the corner of the cube as opposed to hitting like uh, anywhere on the cube. So if I just run into the cube and run over to the yellow block, you'll notice I don't make enough distance. But if I like stand kind of on the same edge and I try to aim for hitting the back of the cube like this, and then I hold left, even then I didn't get enough. It's kind of a tricky jump. There we go. And that gives you just enough distance to hit the corner. So the way that that should look all the way through should be something, oh, should be something like this. So we're coming through. So if you notice, I actually missed one click. I clicked like right around here. And because of that, I actually had to hesitate for a second. I couldn't just keep a full run. Otherwise, I would have run too far to hit the corner. So let me try to see if I can get that one more time, but perfectly. You want to do it just like that. And we have some more bunny hopping. I hope you can hear me. If you hit that wall at just the right angle, you can actually get hung up on it slightly and it slows your momentum, which is what you just saw. Alright, now the thing I said about being able to jump one and a half blocks high is going to apply at the top of this elevator as well. Uh, so I'm going to stand back right around here and as soon as it's about one and a half away from the top, I'm going to get a running jump to try to preserve as much momentum as possible. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but it does make a little bit of a difference. If you don't feel like trying to time it that precisely, you can kind of like hug the wall and just kind of use, like, you can like jump here, and that should give you enough height. Alright. So I do a couple bunny hops here. You want to click this twice. You want to click this, you jump up here, you press this up. You should never lose time to that. The only way you can lose time to that is if you're a derp like me and accidentally press it three times. Because then if you press it three times, it's not on this and you have to wait for everything to reset, which is obnoxious. So yeah, just press this, click once, twice, yellow, jump on, push up, and don't forget to jump, I guess. Um, if you jump, uh, too forcefully, you can actually bang your head off the ceiling and come up short, so don't try to rush that jump too much. Otherwise, you might end up getting worse off. Uh, this next section, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, I'll show you the fast way and then I'll show you the easy way. So you want to click this as soon as you can and you want to twist this room. Sometimes if you're on the room while it's spinning, your camera will like freak out and like twist around and point the other direction. If that happens to you, I'm sorry. The best thing I can tell you is just don't stand on the twisting part as early. Um, here, let me actually reset. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to ride this red part up. And then we're going to jump off of the blue section in a way that allows us to skip having to push this out. So normally they want you to use the blue box launch over here and then jump up, but we can actually just get up there without needing to use yellow at all. So we twist the room, we press red as soon as it lets us, we hold this down to get three frame perfect pushes, and then the blue box is over here. So the quick way to do this is to press this, push this down, and then you wanna run forward and jump to where you hit just the corner of the blue box. And if you do that, you actually get enough height. That's the fast way to do it. Um, if you don't hit that specific corner of the box, then you don't get enough time, uh, you don't get enough launch distance and you don't make it. The alternative way of doing this that I did for a while is a little bit more consistent, um, a little bit easier, but takes longer to set up. So the blue button's over here. I'm actually going to jump over here and I can land on the edge of the geometry that the button's on and then you press the button in and then you just jump and you hold forward and you land up here. 
So that's a slightly slower way to do it, but either way works, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, as you're coming through here, you wanna press this and you wanna to try to click this block if you can. And you wanna hug the right side so you can press the button as soon as possible. If you're in the middle, then you it takes longer to be able to hit the button. So the further to the side you are, the quicker you can hit this button. That starts the ball rolling puzzle. And then you wanna press this after a couple seconds and you wanna hold down right trigger to do these presses. So you push that out and you push this one up, it goes through the hole. As the thing's coming down, you're gonna jump over the wall, click this to hit yellow, press the ball over here to the right, you're gonna hit red, and you're gonna do, you're just gonna hold down the right trigger and do the same thing you just did. As this one comes through, you wanna to try to click these blocks as soon as you can. Push it all the way there, push this one all the way there. The ball is right here in the corner, and if you hit yellow, you'll notice the stair set here. You wanna press this up, and what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna twist the room and the ball's gonna fit right in this little hole and go in. But in order to twist the room, we hit this. And we wanna stand like in this corner of where the yellow box is, trust me on this. So you press this and you click this and you hold right and that brings you up. And then you wanna press this yellow button again. And I'll tell you why in just a sec. If you notice, this block is yellow. Normally this block is grayed out like these two blocks are, but since this is yellow early, you actually get to press this out immediately and stand up here and wait for these other two blocks to turn on. If you don't press yellow before going through uh, the door, then this isn't turned on and you have to wait for everything, so you're just waiting down here for the whole thing to get turned on, so it takes longer. So then we push this in and I jump onto it and in the air, I click this. If you want to feel safe, you can press this first, but it's not too hard to hit it in the air. Just like that. And then we jump to the left, we go forward, we do some more bunny hopping. I don't have much power left. I By the way, there's a couple of hidden areas in here that have hidden puzzles for 100%. Like That's one of them, but uh, we already not. passed another one of them. You're underground. They buried you alive down there so they could test you. They're going to test All right, you. so same thing applies. You can jump one and a half blocks. So once uh, this gets about one and a half high, I'm going to jump over it and start bunny hopping. I like to kind of hug the right a little bit, and you'll see why in a sec. You'll have faith that someone will let you out of the dark, but they won't. I like to jump up on this one because it allows me to do another bunny hop a little bit faster, which makes me move a little faster. And I aim roughly here so that when that wall drops, I can immediately press this magnet. You press it until it lines up the line, pretty much intended strats. Then as you're coming through here, you want to press this immediately, then press this, then turn it off. That puts the block right about where you want it. You want to push this up one, two, three times, and then you're gonna press this, immediately press this, and then you wanna jump off and click the magnet at the same time to where the block lands roughly on the further out part of this thing. And then you just press it once and it lights it up. Let me actually do that one more time. So, oh, so we're coming through the hallway, we click this, Press that, we click, turn this off, and yeah, normally it would have gone further. Press this up one, two, three times, press, press, jump off and press at the same time, it lands on the block, you push it back, it lands in the stream. On this next one, we press this once, we press this once, and our goal is to get it up there. So we jump on this block, and as we're jumping on this block, you want to look up and press this, and then look back over here and press this twice. Then you want to jump up on this windowsill, press this out once, press this, press this once more. So as the block is going up, you have enough time to push this out, turn off the magnet, and then look down and press it one more time before the block falls on it. And then you just want to bring it in to where it hits the light. Let me show that one more time. So push, push, jump, push, push up on the window, push, 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 in, in. Jump over, jump, 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 bunny hop, bunny hop. 
Now this next section isn't hard, okay, but <laughs> it's very, uh, I have good news. it's got Actually, a couple please. easy ways it can kind of troll you or mess with you, uh, if you're not, like, paying attention. And if you mess up this next section, it's really easy to lose a lot of time to it, so this is one where sometimes I'll lose a run just over silliness. Alright, so you want to press this magnet as soon as you can. You press this, and then as soon as this hits the wall, you want to be pressing this button, and you want to push this down. And you want to stop the cube to where it lands roughly on uh, this block. If it's slightly to the left or slightly to the right, that's perfectly fine. It'll still interact with the beam. So as soon as you turn that off and these are in place, you want to press this twice, turn around, press these twice. And you want to wait until this is fully filling the thing. If you start the next part too early, that door will not open. So you don't want to do the next thing I'm going to do too early, otherwise you lose a ton of time. Once you are, once the door has opened, once you've used the audio cue to tell when the door is open, you look down, you press this up once, and these become at different heights. Then you want to press this and it'll start floating, and you want to press the block behind it, and then twist the, and then change the magnets to where this comes over, it stands on top, you want to press this back, push this down, press this back, and the block is currently below us, so when we push this block, they both push us up, and we can land up here. Let me see if I can do that one more time, because that was kind of fast. So, we have all the bunny hopping. So, we're going to make sure that we okay, don't go too cross, early. Then we're going to press the magnet behind us. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to push the block yeah, under us, then the press the magnet behind yeah. us, then push the other block, press the magnet in front of us, and the green cube is going to be on top of the other green cube. Then we turn the magnets around and we start going backwards again. And we push down the block. Here. Maybe it'll be easier to explain like this. I'll kind of show you what it looks like from a side perspective. So push up, push up. Push up, push up. So that fills that up, there's a little sound cue, and then that opens. Then what you do is you push, you go this way, and you want to push this and push that. Back this way, and this is going to line up with the top of this. Then you push this way to where they're on top, you push this down and you push this way, and then you push this up, and that gives you enough height to get over the barrier. Once you know those basic steps, it's pretty easy. You shouldn't okay, mess it up too many times, but if you mess up any of those steps, then it's really, usually pretty difficult to reset. So I've had runs where I was going at a pretty good pace for my skill level at the time and just blew it all away because I accidentally pressed a magnet too early or I like pushed something up not enough or something. It's, it's a really annoying section. You can ride the block if you want. So you wait, you don't want to go too early. I think that's good. Push up, back, push up, forward. Wait, 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 wait. Back, down, forward, up. And then you jump here. And you're done. Now this next section is really easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna press this, wait maybe like a half second, and then twist the room. And what's gonna happen is these blocks are gonna be going up and then they're gonna start going this way because the magnet's shifting direction. This block is gonna land roughly here and the other block's gonna land roughly here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this and then you're just gonna start pressing this. So let me show you what that looks like. So we go boom, wait a second, twist, push, 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 and they line up perfectly. Show that one more time. Boom. Oh, that's probably too late. This is actually a great illustration of what happens if you go too late. So this uh, ended up being too high, and this ended up being too high, and everything was awful, and it made me sad. All right, so. 
I was trying to show you what happens if I go too early that time. It's harder to go too early than it is to go too late, but it's a pretty I'm lenient timing, so you shouldn't have much trouble with that. That's basically the intended Gauss strat. Is like a tiny plant, trying to push its way towards the light. Bunny hopping does actually go faster even up uh, hills. In fact, it's faster to go up hills bunny hopping it. than it is to go You're on straight ground. Because I think wife. what it is is you get, get a little momentum boost from each you're jump. So if you're going uphill, you get more jumps more quickly. Or if there's like a if you're and jumping you're onto a higher block, then you get two if jumps pretty quickly. Alright, the next section has the biggest room for error, in my opinion. It's like the one where it's pretty easy to lose time somewhere, and it's pretty difficult to get like a perfect run. I haven't gotten a perfect Sector 6. Um, I do my splits at a section that's not technically the end of Sector 6, but just don't worry about that. I like to do my uh, splits on cutscenes, so I move my end of Sector 6 split a little bit different spot than what, like, uh... Smokey does. So we fall into the bottom. It's kind of like when we go see Cave Johnson in Portal. We get the dilapidated part of the cube. And we also get introduced to a new puzzle element, which is these balls that like to go around and do ball stuff. Hello, ball. So I like to go over to the right slightly so I can make sure that I always jump over that and then we start to bunny hops. We're going to hug this corner and we're going to try to bounce off the ceiling because when you bounce off the ceiling you get more bunny hops in a smaller rate of time. But as you see if you do it wrong you can get caught on geometry so that's what you have to be careful of getting caught on geometry. I usually don't like to bunny hop through this little tiny hallway because you're almost certain to get hit something and it's not worth it. Then we run to this corner, we do our bunny hops. I pause there for a second because I didn't want to hit the like front corner here. Like if you land on like uh, the edge of a step, it's not as good for you. Then we bunny hop around here, we jump off these boxes, keep bunny hopping. I like to go for jumping off of this box over here on the right, because I feel like I can usually keep up my speed, but there I actually end up bonking. Keep bunny hopping. You don't have to move through this area perfectly. If you kind of just jump a bunch, you're probably going to go about as fast as I'm going. Or as fast as I go. It doesn't save that much time, but optimal movement there can save like a second. Alright, uh, on this one we have a long elevator ride, you can mess around in the elevator, it's really easy to remember which way you have to go afterwards because, as you see, this wall is slightly offset from the other walls, that's because this is the wall you're going to be going through. So you can just dick around in the elevator, she's going to talk a little bit about being upset because uh, she's outside in space losing her mind. She heard like a Friedrich Nietzsche quote got really, it got really into her head. The isolation kind of messed with her. Poor lady. God is dead. <laughs> when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. All that good stuff. I grabbed my tether and pulled myself back into the airlock and shut the door. I know it's just my brain keeping This next uh, room is. Uh, and that's why we do isolation. All, it, the fastest way is just to kind of like not bonk off of stuff and get as many bunny hops as you can without bumping into geometry. So I'll show you the route I usually take. I usually start in this little section off to the right. I jump off these boxes. I keep jumping. I dodge those boxes. I jump off these boxes. If you notice, I stop my bunny hop for a second to make sure I can time the jump for those boxes. And then next part is going to be the ledge jump. So, there's a tiny chunk of geometry over here to the left that you can jump and land on, and it's pretty forgiving. So you jump over here, you get on this little chunk of geometry, and you can go pretty far to the right before it kind of bumps you off. Um, you can also kind of get caught in the corner there of the ledge with the wall. So you want to try to avoid doing that. 
so once you're on this little bit of geometry, you can pretty easily jump over to the side. Um, there I actually jumped too late after I had already fallen off. So you want to jump over here to the side like this. Uh, you don't want to jump to where you hit the corner of this geometry right there, because then you kind of lose your speed. And you want to make sure that you actually jump once you hit it. So it's just to practice it a couple times. You can kind of jump back and forth like this, or like that should have been, just to get a feel for it. You want to be able to hit this without hesitating, like that. And then the next section is going to be to the left. So I jump and I look left in the air. All right, this room you just use uh, intended strats, but there are a couple things I want to talk about with this room because there might be some interesting things. I don't know. So you just push that up and then let it go. Press this up twice, and the wire falls onto this box. I like to fall off here as the wire is falling, so I land on this right as it's turning on. Press it and then bounce. But before that happens, I actually want to show you all uh, an idea that I don't think will ever end up being faster, but could have potential to. So instead of doing that, you can actually jump over here, jump up on this ledge up here, if you don't mess it up like I just did. It's not a difficult jump, I just messed it up. And then jump on this, go around this corner, jump on this, and you can actually just r run up this section here. And it thinks that I just launched, which is funny. And there's actually a little uh, Easter egg room in here that has a picture of the developers. Look at their smiling faces. You get an achievement for doing this, actually. Um, and in my opinion, going into this room and getting that achievement should be part of the 100% category, but I digress. And then once you're up here, you can actually click these buttons from here. So basically, as soon as you're over this little hump, you could hypothetically do all of the important parts of this puzzle from like back here. You press it over, it gets onto there, and you can like hit this box from all the way back here. Oh my god. You can also get soft locked, apparently. Just fun. Oh wait, 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 wait. No, we're good. <laughs> So yeah, you can actually be pressing all the stuff you need to do this room and or this puzzle in this room from all the way back at the uh, back edge. I don't know if doing that would be faster or not, but it is something that could potentially be explored. It would require ridiculously precise aim to hit everything like at a reasonable pace from way the heck back on that hill. But normally, I do the launch. I jump here, and as soon as I'm jumping over here, I'm pressing this uh, thing. Now this will go over here, and before I go any further, these chords are either RNG or are basically a double pendulum to the point that they are effectively RNG, like there's no way to 100% know that all your clicks are going to be good. There are ways to kind of like manipulate them to where they, you don't get messed up in this area, but those are slower than just going for it. So this first one, as you see, the cord goes over here, it lands on this, and it powers up this plate, so now I can push it. But sometimes, or, and we want to push this up and hit this, but sometimes the cord actually doesn't uh, want to be in a good spot, and when you start pushing this off, the cord falls off. So let me see if I can actually replicate that. So if it's not on in a good way, it can just slide off like that. And when that happens, you just push this up, but this didn't turn on. So it is very easy to just lose time having to repeatedly press this block down and then back up to get it. Yep, there, it just messed up again. And that time it worked. So as soon as this one connects, I press this to get this spinning, and I push this out. And you'll see this is really, like, swinging a lot now. And... What I want to do is I want to time it to where the swinging is not going towards this corner. 
because if it does, it'll get caught on this corner and completely miss this plate whenever you press wet, right? So I'm actually going to try to show you what that looks like. So if I just do this and then immediately press right, it's highly probable that this is just going to miss entirely. Though sometimes it hits perfectly. Like there, it just missed entirely. It had too much swinging, so it went too far in. It's actually kind of uncommon for it to go too far to the right and miss. Usually it goes too far to the left and misses, or it gets caught on this and misses. But there's a bunch of different ways it can miss, and it can also miss on the return trip. So that time it hit. This is this part of the run is effectively the most RNG run killery part, and I've had instances where I've had to like make it go back and forth like three or four times before it actually hit. It is more consistent the less quick the rope is moving. Um, there is a way to get it to not to do it on the first try almost every time, but it requires waiting a couple seconds, so I'll kind of show that. So we press this up three times, immediately press that, push that out, press this out. And what I want to do is I want to get it as the vine is swinging to the left. Oh, I messed that up. If you get it as the vine is starting to swing to the left, then it'll usually hit the plate. So we go one, two, three, boom, boom. And you'll see the vine swing a little bit. And then as it's swinging to the left, we should be okay. And we're not okay. Like I said, should. Uh, what having it swing to the left does is it makes it to where it always misses this little hang-up spot, which that little hang-up spot is usually the reason it doesn't work, but not always the reason it doesn't work. So this part can really just mess you up. Let me see if I can get a good run of it. That was too late, it's going to get caught up. Yep, as you saw, it got caught up on the edge. I'm getting good luck on this first part, uh, but the biggest bad luck is really on the second part. All right, there we go. All right, so now once we have that set up, we want to do two things. We want to be pushing this in, and we want to be pushing this twice, pushing this, and then pushing it one more time. And if you get good luck, the cord just goes over here and it turns it on. Sometimes, though, the cord will like slide off the side, or it'll have like too much of a bounce and not make it. So there's still RNG even at that point. All right, let me do it one more time all the way through. And if we get the bad RNG, we'll just roll with the bad RNG. It's fine. And we got bad RNG on that. Double bad RNG. Good. Also, that yellow cord can sometimes hit this on the first swing, and sometimes it doesn't hit it to the back swing, so that's another random thing that can gain or lose you some time. Alright, so for these stairs, I like to jump on to this one that's like poke it down slightly. And you can always jump one and a half locks high, so when you're on this stair, you can land on this block, but not this one. Or just, just a, it's not one and a half locks high exactly that you can go, it's like uh, slightly more like slightly further which is why you want to jump usually when you see it at the half mark so we jump up here we go up here jump up here we jump up here and it's not super important to do that ideal because this next part is on a cycle the only part that matters is when the cycle starts to load so this thing goes around we want to press this that'll make the uh, box go in here we press this I want to push this and then we push this down and it'll launch it through here and then uh, normally we want this already up, and we want these two in place. 
And when it hits this, we push this out and we push this back in. It'll hit this and go through this little hole. So it comes through the hole and we want to push this up to stop it from going any further. It goes over here and hits this block. We push that in. It's going to go over here. It's going to push this. And then this next part, you can jump through the wall as soon as the brick hits it. So you can time it like that if you run with this track. Oh, I think I actually got a cutscene, so, ah, oh, yeah. It won't let me do it. Oh, that's so funny. It actually fixes the wall if you load, if you manually load this section. That's super interesting. I didn't know that. All right, so this one, you want to immediately get over here because if you're on cycle, you can push this up and push this three times before the block gets too close. But you see how it's like flashing gray? If it gets too close, you stop being able to press the button. But if you time it just right, you can press this and then immediately press this three times. If you're even a little bit late, then uh, you have to wait for the ball to go around an extra cycle. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. So I'm immediately going to press the button in front of me and then turn left and press the other one. Okay, this is off because it's not in the original game. So it's going to go over here and as soon as it's off of this, you press this, it bounces down, it goes into this pit, it bounces off a couple walls and it eventually ends in there. So uh, you can jump through this wall, like I said, as soon as the wrecking ball hits it. So we're going to do that. We're going to go over here. And in order to get first cycle, you have to do this perfectly. So you run up here, you jump in here, you jump in this window, and you can barely make it in time to press that block. If you miss that block, then you have to wait for it to go all the way around the thing again. Then it comes over here, you're gonna press this block, this block, this block, and this block, and you're gonna press in this launcher block. It's gonna go around, and it's gonna bounce off a launcher rock, hit this block. And then I'm going to press this block up at just the right time to where it pushes this up, it slides over this, it comes over here, and it bounces it into the wrecking ball. We come in here, and then this if you want to do this fast, you just jump up here, the whole thing is and you go over. I can see all Alternatively, your camera if you, uh, you really think this don't want to do that, car. you can just walk around. Colors, it's not that symbols, much slower. They're all human. They're all things you can understand and solve. It's all part of it. It's like uh, and you think the cube is really going to be faster. The hanging wires, to the use holes the in the wall. None of them lead you anywhere. They don't want you to go. This next chamber you is just four clicks. Click one, click two, click three, click four. You can do it while running. No need to lose time. This next one uh, is some a place where you could probably optimize this if you have good, better aim than me. So I usually come out here, stop, click this. Walk forward a little bit, stop, click this, walk over here, and then I press this up. If you're good, you can actually literally just like at a full run, click, click, or I'm sorry, click, click, and by that point you'd be just about here and you could click this up. But I am bad at aiming, so I don't do that. And then once it's in this position, what's going to happen is I'm going to press it up here and it's going to make this blue line uh, turn purple, go off this and hit the purple cube. That's going to trigger a brief moment where I can't click on any buttons. So I'm actually going to do that first. And you'll notice that I can't click. I'm clicking. You can hear me clicking. Nothing happens. Remember how I said if you hold down the click button, you get frame perfect clicks? That also stops that from happening. So as we're coming through here, we hit that, we hit that, we press up. And now if I click and hold click, I'll be able to do this even during that section when normally I'm not able to click at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this and then I'm going to hold down click and I'm going to get two clicks on this. It's going to twist the go to go down here. I'm going to click this and I'm going to click this. It's going to make the laser go boom, boom, and then up here to the top and that's going to solve the puzzle. So let me just go ahead and show that. So as you see, I can get clicks even while my reticule is going, and that goes in there, and it opens up the door. Now let's see it all the way through. 
So we're going here, we click, 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 hold down, click. And I missed one of my shots, but that's okay. Then we jump up here. On the second to last one, oop, on the second to last one, we jump immediately to the left. And then there's a couple different ways to tackle this room. This is the current one that I do. I press down, then I click one, two, three. I do it over here because we're gonna need this one to be tilted uh, later. But this one made the yellow beam go over here, so we're gonna press this to redirect the yellow beam to this one. We're gonna press the bottom one again to redirect it over here and turn it orange. And then when we click this, it's gonna interact with this and we're gonna have the same thing where it doesn't let me click for a while. So you can hear me clicking, no clicks are happening. It locks me out of it. But if you hold down the trigger, like we saw last time, that'll uh, make it to where I can continue clicking during that cutscene. So we go click, 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 and then hold down click, and we're gonna twist this left right, or we're gonna twist this right twice, and then we twist this down, and usually by then we have the ability to just click at our leisure. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, probably the most optimal way would be to click this, then this, and then run sideways, and then click this twice, and that actually lines everything up. It actually hits off of this back one that we clicked earlier, and that opens the door. Um, oh, sorry. Alternatively, uh, you could do it the way I'm about to do now, which is gonna be slightly different, but not quite as optimal, but it's the way I got used to doing it, so I still do it that way. All right, and then we hold down, click, boom, 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 boom. So that's usually how I do it. That's uh, the muscle memory I developed. Uh, it might be a couple frames slower than uh, the first hey, method I showed, but the first method requires more consistent aim to get Look, any time advantage at all, news. and you have to that be able to make the wife. clicks while you're strafing, like so it's, it's a little more possible. difficult, and it doesn't but save hey, much time for the extra on the home stretch anyway. Alright, this one's pretty simple. You just push this out way, three times, jump of, off of it, uh, go over here. And then you push this box first because it makes it to where the whole cycle takes a little bit less long. So we're going to be putting this block on that cube and we have plenty of time to do it. And then we push this away. So that gives the block less uh, travel time. Then we push this off and we push this one, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four times, and a door opens behind us. <clears throat> we keep moving, we do some strafe jumps through here, or not strafe jumps, uh, bunny hops. You can jump over this little gap. Pretty straightforward stuff. Oh, um, this corner right here, you'll notice I kind of like gave it some birth. There's some weird geometry that happens in this corner, and so it's really easy to get like stuck or have something weird happen or like get caught on a wall. Weird, so I usually, uh, I usually try to have like a mental picture of where the invisible geometry of that is so that I don't bonk into it. Then the only part that matters here is clicking this top button as soon as possible because that starts the cycle. And you have to wait a while for anything to happen. So you want to hit that first because that lowers the waiting. And you want to try to get this to where on the first cycle when that first comes up you can get the box in there. I didn't think it would send me this far back, that's annoying. I won't reset like that for this section again if I want to show something different. So yeah, you press the yellow button, um, then you just push the box over, and you wait for the box to come back, or the, um, the moving box to come back, you push it on there, and then it's basically a, um, what's the word? It's like, uh, what's the what's the word for when you're just auto-scroller? It's an auto-scroller. That's basically what it is. So then you have to wait for it to come back again. You push the block on there. And the original cube, there's a cute little trick you can do to do this with one fewer cycle, which is nice, but 
in this game, that trick, to the best of my knowledge, is impossible. But maybe someone else could get it to work, I don't know. I like to press this while it's only half on because it saves a couple frames. As soon as that's in position, you run up here and we go to the box puzzle. The box puzzle is a little intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's, uh, it's not so bad. It involves magnets and momentum, and it's easy to kind of get messed up, but it's not so bad. So there's these boxes, and these magnets push the boxes around. The big boxes move slower, and the little boxes move faster. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to push this box, or this magnet, for like maybe a second, and then immediately turn it off, and that's going to shove all the boxes over slightly to the right. And what's going to happen is this box's corner is going to be kind of in line with this box, and we're going to turn the magnet on this way and make all the boxes start going that way. We're going to use this corner to push this box and kind of twist it and have the small box go off to the side. And then once the box is off to the side, we can push everything over to the side, and you'll see uh, once we're in that spot, you'll see the small box here, the other small box here, the big box here, and the big box here. So let me show you what this looks like. So we press this for a second, turn around, we press this, and then we push this out one, two, three times. Press this one, two, three times. And this is what I call slow box because uh, I barely got it off to the side. But I'm going to stop everything right now. As you can see, these two boxes are kind of where they need to be um, as far as the left to right axis is concerned and they need to go over here and line up so we're going to press this and this box is kind of caught because this is in the way you can press this a little bit and then press this again to kind of fix that like if you see it getting jammed you can kind of finagle with it And this is roughly the setup you want to see. So the two small boxes in the corner and the big boxes in front of them. Then you're going to push this magnet until the big boxes are touching the light. And then you're going to press this magnet. And you're going to stop. And they all will light up like that. Oh. Let me show you what this looks like at full speed. Um, oops. I, oh, we're good. Uh, sometimes you can get caught in that elevator and get soft locked. Alright, so the longer you push that button, the further everything goes over to the side. And the more to the side this box is, the quicker it'll twist. So right now, uh, it'll probably twist kind of medium. If I make it go just a little bit further, it'll probably twist faster. But this box will now get caught on this section. So you don't want to go too far. I'd say right about here is roughly where you want to be. So now you see it's just barely on the corner. You'll see this actually twists a lot faster. And then we can press this over. We actually got caught, so we want to do that. And then you want to press it over again. It's still not working. And as you can see, I'm kind of finagling with it. All right, now everything looks good. We press this, and then as soon as uh, it touches the light, I like to press back, and that usually makes it line up perfectly like that. One more time. This time, just doing it, not worrying about showing the details, just so you can see it at full speed. So I like to try to click this with our jump and click this. Push, push, push. I like to push this one out while I'm waiting for this box to twist. I didn't get a good one, so the twist is going to be kind of slow, and this is going to kind of get wedged. And they don't need to be perfect, so I'm actually going to go with this. Even though they're kind of at weird angles, it should still work. As you see, there we go. Now, a door is going to open here, but it's going to be an invisible wall for a second, so don't jump. If you jump, you get caught like that, like I just did. But you can uh, spam the scroll wheel through there and get a bunch of jumps, and that'll make you go a little faster. 
I split here because this is a cutscene, but this isn't technically the end of Sector 6. Uh, and if you look at other speedrunners, you'll see that they actually uh, do their split at a different spot. But it's just preference. It doesn't really matter where you choose to split. If you want, you could split here and at the true beginning of Sector 6, but like that'll be a split that you'll probably never actually gain any time on because it's just walking and waiting in an elevator. The next segment is my favorite section, actually. Um, there's a couple of annoying elements to it, but it has the out of bounds skip, which is a lot of fun. And it's also why we need to practice menuing. And then it's got a couple other cool tricks that are pretty fun. I think they're fun, at least. So I like to go around to the side of this. I've also seen speedrunners go around this side of it. I don't think it matters. I haven't like timed which one saves more frames. They seem about the same distance, so I don't think either one's really that much faster. But I go to the right, because I think it's a little bit more of a direct route. I might be wrong about that. And this is really just bunny hopping and waiting for doors to open and elevators to happen. Who are you and how are you on this frequency? Sir, this is a private government channel. I don't know how you're broadcasting out here, but what you're doing is illegal. You can kind of jump what through this, war with a bu or this door with a bunny hop. This uh, elevator is the only one that doesn't create an invisible wall behind it, that I know of at least. Um, so you can actually just jump back here and the elevator will go down without you. And you can come back here and you can just stick around for a while. It doesn't help you at all, it doesn't save any time, but it's a thing. There's also another neat little useless thing in this uh, elevator, which is if you hug the front wall, there will be a section where like it goes at an angle, this part right here, and there's a little ledge right here that you can stand on and it looks like you're floating. It's kind of neat, I like it. But yeah, you go through here, you fall down this hole, and then starts the actual beginning of Sector seven and it lags now during this cutscene if you're just holding forward on w your w key will be disabled so you actually need to let go of w while that loading is happening in order to be able to walk immediately what you're going to do is pretty straightforward you walk in here you grab blue by clicking on it oh that's another thing uh, now you can grab different colors and put them on the block so you can make this a red block alternatively you can make it a blue block and you can make it a yellow block. Uh, the way this works is when you grab this the first time, you're in change the color mode. So if I click a block, it'll turn it into blue. You can see my uh, gloves are turned blue, but my fingers are turned yellow. Uh, and then if you press it again, you just get rid of it. So we grab this, we turn it blue, and then we push it down, we jump. The next section is going to be very similar, except on this one we want a staircase, so we're going to grab yellow. And you can't grab yellow immediately, you actually have to go like into here before it'll actually even let you click on the yellow. So you have just enough time to press this and get on it uh, if you're running full speed before you lose any, any time. Even then it's kind of difficult to get it perfectly. But that one's pretty straightforward, you just make a stair. Alright, now this next section is another ball puzzle. Um, but in order to do it optimally, it's kind of a strict timing on one of the pushes. It's not super strict, like you can get it consistent, but if you mess it up, it wastes a lot of time, so it's annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna immediately press this as we come in, we're gonna grab red, we're gonna press this, we're gonna push it twice, and then we're gonna push the ball at just the right time to where it rolls over here and rolls over this button. While it's rolling over there, we're gonna turn this button into a launch button and it bounces over and lands in this spot down here. Now, the part that makes this tricky isn't the theory of the thing at all. The theory of the thing's pretty simple. Um, so, the part that makes this tricky is that in order to get the ball to hit that specific uh, spacing, you have to hit it with the corner of this block. If you hit it too far back, then it'll go too far and it'll roll over here and miss the bouncy plate, which is in the middle. If you don't hit it, or if you hit it with the flat side of the block, then it'll roll in here. If you hit it with the corner, but also kind of the flat side, like right here, then it'll roll here and it'll miss the block. 
So you have to hit it with just the right part of the, the ball with just the right part of the red block in order for it to go over the button like you want. And I'll kind of show you where you want to do that. So we hit play, and I like to click it whenever I see the ball rolling over this line. And if you do that, that looks like it'll just barely be enough. So if you noticed, I actually clicked a little bit early. And if I would have gone any earlier at all, even a couple frames earlier, it would have missed the button. So uh, the way this should look at full speed, sorry, the bad menuing, I was using my mouse. The way this should look at full speed should be something like this. Hopefully I can do a first try. But if you get it even slightly off, it's annoying because you have to reset the button and wait for the ball to roll down again. There, I pressed it too early. So, boom. Now we have to press this again and wait for it to come down again. Pressed it too early again. It's not even going to make it past. So you have to wait for it to come down again. As you can see, this can kill a run pretty easily. That's probably fine. So yeah, that particular part is definitely one of the run killers. Oh, you can jump over this door as it's coming down. That's one of the run killers, so I would recommend practicing that. Uh, if you are walking on this lift at just the right time, it's possible, you see how I'm kind of like shaking? It's possible to force your way through the floor. I haven't found a way to make that useful. Now what you normally want to do in this section is grab the pink one, press that, and then if you stand in the corner here and press this, it'll actually shove you slightly into the geometry. And because of that, you actually don't fall at this point because really you're standing just on the inside edge of one of these blocks. And then you can just kind of hold forward and land here, and that opens the door. One other thing you could potentially do is break out of the map with this. So if you stand here and then hold left and twist, you can actually bust out of the map. This, however, is not useful because the direction you need to go is the other side of this wall. And I've tried quite a few things to get to the other side of this wall and I haven't been able to succeed on anything. I tried exploring over there, I tried exploring uh, this edge, I tried seeing if I could launch off of this part of the wall twisting, I tried seeing if I could launch with this thing twisting, and I just haven't been able to find any way to make it work. So at this point I have uh, soft locked myself, so I need to reset. So you can't get out of bounds here, unfortunately, but luckily you can get out of bounds in the next section with a very similar thing. Or you can get out of bounds, it's just not useful. So once you've uh, made it up here, we go down this hallway. This is the hallway we were blocked from going through anyway. And then we're going to do something very similar. We're going to press this. But instead of going up like last time, we're going to press this to where it's twisting this way. And then what I like to do is I like to look to the left and press A and then W and try to like shove myself into the corner as it's twisting. If you do this right, you'll actually go into the geometry and be stuck in this part of the floor because this wall is going to be floor. Let me show you what I mean. So I twist and then I'm holding into this corner. And did you see how I was kind of like shoved into the floor there for a second and then popped out? I uh, didn't quite get it right, but uh, let me do it again. By the way, to the best of my knowledge, it only works in this specific corner. So you need to have the arrows pointing to where they're on the ground. So we do that, and then we press into the floor, and now, as you see, I didn't pop out of the floor. I'm stuck in the floor. I look a lot shorter. Everything is great. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to look up. I'm going to press this, and it's going to twist. And as you can see, I'm actually in the geometry. And if I try to click around, you'll notice that I can't press the little marker on anything. It just makes these weird little like particle effects. That's because I'm so far into the floor that I'm actually clicking on the inside of the geometry rather than clicking on the geometry that I can see. But what I can do is I can walk forward slightly, not far enough, walk forward slightly a little bit more. You'll see now I'm on the other side of the wall and now I can click stuff. 
Sometimes, uh, whenever you do this, you'll just barely be on the floor and you won't be far enough into the wall to where you need to worry about that. You'll just immediately be able to click on stuff. It really just depends on how you get your setup. The optimal setup is to actually be just enough on the floor to where you can press immediately without having to inch forward. What you want to do next is you're going to twist this again and you're going to hold back. And as you hold back, the whole room's going to twist and you're going to have uh, this become your ceiling, but this doesn't really have strong geometry. So you'll just be able to kind of fall out of the map, kind of like how I showed you before with the other twisting room. So I'm going to hold back, oh, press that, and we are out of the map. Bada bing, bada boom. Once we're out of the map, you might be like, oh no, there's this big wall, but it's not a real wall. You can just walk through it. Keep walking, keep walking. There is a section somewhere in here that you can bonk into, yeah, this part right here. But if you walk into like this part right here, then you miss that section of actual hard geometry because it's right here. You can kind of see it, it's glowing. So you just walk this way and we are out of the map. And the next section of the map is over here, but oh no, it's not loaded in. How do we get there? What do we do from here? I'm so confused. Ah nothing to worry about. The end of that puzzle area is this hallway right here, and this hallway is also where the load zone is. Um, and if I edge up to the edge, you can see you can actually jump into that hallway. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump out and then immediately hold to the left. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, the most optimal way is to actually just run forward and jump right as you're about at this line and then immediately hold back and you can land in the hallway. Or you can do the safe thing, which is to edge up to the side, jump, and aim in. So let me show you the safe way first. It's like that. Um, and then I'll show you what I call the YOLO jump, which is not doing it safely. In order to do the YOLO jump, it's all about jumping at just the right spot and immediately holding back as soon as you can. If you don't hold back immediately, you'll just fall into the abyss and there's no kill plane, so you have to reset to menu. So we do this, we get into the floor. I don't think I'm in. If I am in, it's just barely. Um, and if you're not in, when you press this, you actually just fall out. As you notice, I, don't, I didn't actually like ride the wall up. So sometimes it may take a couple tries to get into the floor. You'll notice that the previous world record actually had to try it twice to get into the floor. I think that I'm not on the floor here either. The current world record gets this first try and also gets the ideal setup, which is nice, but it is kind of tricky. Okay, I think I'm in the floor now. And this is actually ideal setup, because as you see, I don't need to inch forward to be clicking on the wall. So I immediately start holding back, press that, bump out of the map. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The difficult, the most difficult part of this trick isn't uh, the part where you break out of the map, it's the part where you get stuck on the floor to begin with. So YOLO jump should look something like this. And then uh, you can bunny hop backwards, so I usually just bunny hop backwards, but you want to run into this hallway until you see the little loading icon in the bottom left, and then you want to do your menuing where you press escape, double down, enter, right, enter. I'm not going to do that now. So you walk forward, there's the loading icon, escape, and then like that. And then this starts, and you can actually move forward during that cutscene. If you notice, it looked like two pairs of arms were running in front of me and jumping. Yeah, that was actually my character okay. model. Um, and then you jump up here, you ride this elevator up. That last step, by the way, can sometimes kind of shove you into the ground. It's awkward. Uh, I don't know. If you try running this category, you'll see what I mean. So that's uh, the, it for the um, inconsistent or kind of like tricky parts of the runs. Everything from here, as long as you don't make simple mistakes, you should be okay. This is basically where the run becomes more or less safe. But there is still one cool looking trick, it's just a pretty consistent trick. So, so um, the green blocks in this game, whenever you spawn one on top of your character model, the game wants to push you out of the green block. 
and in this room it pushes you all the way to the ceiling so we're going to really abuse that so first off on this section you'll notice there's an area around here that we can't jump out of we're kind of like stuck in this pit but there are these sections that we can put colors on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put purple on this corner and whenever you twist this if you jump you'll actually be able to jump up here on the area that you can't currently jump so oh, i actually messed it up there so you twist and you jump up this what the heck i never had this much trouble with this all right Okay, there we go. So you can actually make it up here while it's twisting. Normally that's a lot easier. I don't know why I had so much trouble with that. So once you're up here, you'll notice there's a section of wall up here right below this window. This window is where we want to go. And like I said, we're going to be launching to the ceiling. But if we don't have anything to land on, we won't be able to get into the window. So we're going to grab yellow and we're going to make a platform up here. And we're going to be launching from here all the way up to that platform. Next we grab green, and pr placing green puts a, uh, puts a box in here. If you're standing where the box spawns, you get launched up. So I'm going to turn off the box, turn it back on, and walk over this, and press, and I get launched up here. Then you just hold into the wall, and you press this back in, and you can land at the edge. Super easy. Cool looking, flashy, but easy. Doing bunny hops in this section is kind of tricky. If you uh, land on the corner of any of these, it can like stop your momentum and make it actually slower than not bunny hopping at all. But it looks like I got a good route through there. This room is pretty easy. I usually start by grabbing green and putting the block there. Then I grab red. You're basically gonna solve this like intended. I put one push out there, grab yellow, or not yellow, uh, pink move pink over here twice to where this is here and this is here grab blue push this down grab yellow push and that breaks the block and as that's breaking you want to be pressing this twice because that gives you green and then you can do the launch thing again to get up here if you don't want to launch you could also just press the block and jump twice but I think launching is a couple frames faster so I would just spawn the green box on top of you and launch up like I did and at that point you're pretty much done with the record or you're pretty much done with the run there's gonna be one more um, elevator and then there's gonna be at the very end there's gonna be like a big cutscene with lots of lag and you're gonna see like the walls like twisting and opening and it can sometimes be kind of tricky to get through the opening wall as fast as possible. But what I recommend is to just jump with the parts that are twisting and like kind of alternate jumping slightly to the right and slightly to the left. And if you do that, you can get through the hole quickly. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It is possible to get hung up on that twisting wall area, but uh, getting through it quickly is good because it's the last thing that can lose you time in the run. If it does lose you time, though, it's only a few seconds. So we're going to go through here, and there's going to be a bunch of lag. I like to look at the floor to minimize the lag. And then I'm going to jump to it. I got caught, yeah. Yeah. So that's an example of that going pretty badly. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like to get through the hole quickly. Oh, also, bunny hop through here. You get a lot of extra speed from all your strafe jumps. Or all your bunny jumps, I mean. Bunny hop. This be your last chance. You know what I mean? That's how people lie. So yeah, as you saw as I was going through it, like one layer would be going kind of clockwise and one layer would be going counterclockwise. My recommendation is to kind of go with the flow and if you see it going clockwise, uh, then jump to the uh, jump to the left and if you see it going counterclockwise, jump to the right. Like in line with the motion of how you see it going. I don't know if you can hear me banging, but you have to believe what I'm saying. I I can't really describe it better than that. Sorry that we have to wait so long and go through this whole end cutscene again. It's not a name, it's a threat. You're Jonathan, and they're going to burn you. 
Jesus Christ, yeah, this is the end of the run, basically. There's not a whole lot else to say about it. I hope that so far the commentary has been insightful for anyone interested in running this category. There's definitely optimizations to be made. Okay, so here we go. See what I mean about kind of jumping with the twist? I kind of jumped to the left and jumped to the right, and jumped to the left and jumped to the right, and that allowed me to get through the hole as quick as possible. And timing stops now. Right as you enter that, and the cutscene takes over. So yeah, that is it for my uh, Cube uh, speedrun tutorial. It was kind of off the cuff. I'm sorry if I kind of droned on a little long in parts, but I hope that it is insightful for anyone interested in learning this game and potentially taking the record. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe.